أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصلي عليه this is a short video to give you a few basic masal with respect to itikaf. We are coming to the last 10 days of Ramadan this year and I thought it would be useful to give a few basic pointers for itikaf. First thing is, what is itikaf? Itikaf is the name given to the act of worship where an aqil balig male, which means a person, a male of sound intellect of the age of puberty, when such a male person sits in seclusion in a shari masjid where jamaat for salah takes place and he sits in seclusion in such a masjid for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free from all impurity alternatively it is when an aqil balig lady a lady of sound intellect and the age of puberty sits in seclusion in a place of worship in her home whilst she is free from all major impurity a person in impurity, in a state of impurity, cannot enter the masjid. And therefore, of course, a male who is in a state of janaba, for example, cannot enter the masjid, cannot sit itikaf. However, if such, if a person is in itikaf, is, is inside the masjid, and then it happens that he has ihtilam, release of bodily fluids and he enters a state of janaba that doesn't break his itikaf he can go do ghusl come back and continue with his itikaf so it's a question of if a person is in the major state of impurity he cannot start the itikaf if the major state of impurity occurs later he can cleanse himself and continue the itikaf for a lady, she cannot enter itikaf if she is in a state of hez or nifas, so her monthly cycle or um, postnatal bleeding, so you know the, the bleeding that they suffer, women suffer from after giving childbirth. If they're in any of those states of impurity or, of course, in a state of janabat also, then they cannot begin their etikaf. If they enter a state of impurity of hairs or nifas afterwards, and in, in that case it's most likely going to be hairs rather than nifas, but if they enter the major state of impurity during the etikaf, that will break the etikaf also. So... In that situation, I have ha uh, had a, a couple of sisters asking me that our time of the month will come during the last 10 days. We wanted to sit at the calf. What should we do? I did explain that it will break your at the calf. However, in modern times, there are tablets, there are medication available, which ladies can take, which delays their monthly cycle. And they, are, they can take those, it is permissible to take those tablets, delay the onset of the uh, monthly cycle so that they can get through the last 10 days and sit their itikaf. Um, women also use these tablets when they go for hajj and umrah so that their, their ibadat worship at hajj and umrah is also not interrupted by their monthly cycle. For men, it is a condition of itikaf that a shari masjid is the place of itikaf. One where a muazzin and an imam are appointed. If there is such a masjid where there isn't an appointed imam or a muazzin, then that masjid cannot be a place of itikaf. Likewise, 
if the masjid is not a Shari masjid. So, for example, there are many centers, there are many musallas where salah takes place, where programs and other dawa work does take place, but the masjid is, or, or, or the or the center is, uh, for example, in in a public place. For example, it might be a room in a shopping center, it might be um, a a, a room in a block of flats. It might be above um, commercial premises, for example. These types of places are not Shari masjids. The reason being that the accommodation of the masjid is is temporary. In other words, it's not. It's it's being used for worship, but it is not waqf. It is not being given for the purposes. Of use as a masjid in other words the owner can at any time turn around and say listen I need my space back and I wish to sell it I wish to renovate it I wish to use it for another purpose and then you would have to forfeit that space back to the owner so there are many other conditions which I'm not going into today with respect to what a Shari masjid is but again that is a condition it must be a Shari masjid where Ittikaf is sat, not any other type of masjid. And it must be a masjid where there is an appointed Imam and Muazzin. Even if five times Salah Jamaat does not take place in that masjid, it is still permissible to do Ittikaf there as long as there is an appointed Imam and Muazzin. So that is a condition of uh, Ittikaf. That's of course for men, because it is men who sit in the masjid. For women, it is a place in the house which is used for worship, which is clean, which is pure, where worship can be conducted for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The primary condition for ittikaf is niya, intention. Intention must be made for uh, ittikaf by the muttaqif, and that is crucial to the ittikaf. Now, I think the most important thing about ittikaf, not what you should do, but more more so what you shouldn't do, what breaks your ittikaf. I think this is important to understand. First of all, leaving the masjid for any other reason other than a shari'i or tabi'i reason is will break the will break the ittikaf. Shari or Tabi reason. You are permitted to leave the masjid for for a Shari or Tabi reason. If you leave the masjid for any other reason, then that will break the fast. And I'll explain that in a minute. Cohabitation. So if you sleep with your husband or your wife, that will break your ittikaf. Kissing and cuddling with your wife or husband, which then releases to bodily fluids, this will also break the ittikaf. And the fourth thing which breaks the fast is if you break your fast, your rosa, your psalm. If you break your fast, your ittikaf will automatically break. So another condition of ittikaf that we understand now is fast. For those people who do not fast, who have exemption, in Sharia, they cannot sit at the kaf. They can sit nafli at the kaf, they cannot sit sunnah at the kaf, the at the kaf which we all understand in the last 10 days of Ramadan. So, fasting is a condition for that also. What is hajat al tabi? What is a tabi reason to leave the masjid? It means a, a um, bodily reason. A requirement that you have as a human so for example if you your hajat to go to the toilet to pass your urine or to pass uh, 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 to defecate or so th these types of reasons or hunger these are bodily human reasons to leave the masjid so for example if you leave the masjid to go to the toilet which may be outside the masjid that is acceptable, but you must go to the to the toilet and return back back straight after performing your necessary act. Of course, leaving the masjid for a shari reason. What is a shari reason? 
something like making wudu. It is necessary for you to do wudu in order to conduct your worship and therefore if the wudu place is outside of the masjid, you can leave the masjid, go to the place of wudu, make wudu and return back. But remember, when you do leave to make wudu, you must re return back immediately. If you loiter around, hang around, start talking to people about this and that, or start wasting time, spending time unnecessarily outside of the masjid, that will break your ittikaf. So it's important that you return immediately back to your place of ittikaf. You can also leave the masjid for, um, for food. So if you don't have anybody who can bring you food or can make arrangements to provide for you, for food for you inside the masjid, then it is perfectly acceptable for you to um, go outside the masjid in so much as it facilitates you to, to provide yourself with food. So to the nearest takeaway or to the nearest store so you can go and buy yourself something or to the nearest place where you can go to make yourself some food that is permissible and for as long as it takes you to fulfill your necessary requirement of obtaining food if you spend any longer time than that outside of the masjid then your itikaf will break in terms of the masjid itself, you can go anywhere inside the masjid during a state of itikaf that will not break your itikaf. And the, the, what is included in that is, of course, the, the hall, the, the prayer hall itself, the place where you read salah, um, the walls of the masjid, the roof of the masjid, the mihrab of the masjid, the uh, the uh, in in many traditional mas masajids, especially in eastern countries, you have the courtyard of the masjid, which is also part of the masjid. These places you can walk and and, and go between easily during a state of it it off. Going outside the boundary of any of this, other than for the reasons that I have stated for it, for personal reasons in terms of for bodily reasons or for shari reason for doing wudu then that will break your ittikaf if there are shower facilities available inside the masjid then they can be used if required but remember that ghusl it's only permitted in a state of ittikaf if ghusl becomes farz. In other words, if you have any release of bodily fluids, then of course you must do ghusl. And if the facilities are available at the masjid, then that is brilliant. If they are not, you are entitled to go to your house or to the nearest facilities where there are ghusl facilities. You make ghusl, you purify yourself, you then come back to your place of ittikaf and you carry on your ittikaf. It is not recommended to do sunnah ghusl during ittikaf. So you should not do ghusl other than for a, a wajib reason where, you're, where you have entered a state of impurity. Other than that, doing wazu, of course, is a condition, is a shirt, is first for your, your worship, and therefore it is fine for you to go as many times as is required to the place of wudu and to, to make your wudu. I just want to mention at this point smoking. There are many people who smoke, and again, if you leave the boundary of the masjid to smoke, that will break your ittikaf. What you can do, even though it's undesirable, is to sit on the wall of the masjid or if there's a door which, which goes outside, leads outside of the masjid and you stand inside the doorway with the door open, smoking outwards, that would be permissible in terms of it wouldn't, be, uh, wouldn't break your ittikaf. Although it would be undesirable and disliked, it wouldn't break your ittikaf. Another point I want to mention here is that many people during ittikaf, when they're in the masjid, the masjid may have programs, they may have gatherings, and therefore they often request the people sitting in ittikaf to assist with cooking, with other, uh, 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 you know, uh, help for the for the gathering or for the for the function that is about to take place. That is perfectly fine as long as the muttaqifin remain inside the masjid. What they cannot do is if the cooking facilities are outside of the masjid and 
they are then requested that it's fine for you to go outside of the masjid in order to serve people, to cook for them, and so on and so forth. That is incorrect. The muttaqif cannot leave the masjid for any other reason except the reasons that I have stated. So even if it is to cook for other people and to serve other people, if the place of cooking is outside of the masjid, then it, the muttaqif cannot go to that place and cannot cook because it is an extra reason, it is an unnecessary reason. He can only leave the masjid for a necessary reason, for a bodily function or for a shari reason. And I've already explained what those are. For a lady, her place of ittikaf, she selects that in her home. And again, the same rules apply for her, except they will apply to her designated place in her house. She cannot leave that designated place unless she needs to go to the bathroom for, for, for bodily re reasons, or she, she becomes impure and she needs to purify herself, or she needs to cook for herself, there's nobody else to provide for her, then she can leave, otherwise she must remain inside her designated place of worship. If she leaves that place of worship for any other reason than those stated, or prolongs her stay beyond the necessary stay outside of those outside of um, her designated area then that will break her ittikaf i hope this has been useful may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our efforts and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant everyone the ability to sit ittikaf and to benefit wa akru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin